So I'm going to lay down and get this word right now because I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody and I'm a sister in Christ to you and I don't need the hoopla. I just need the Father to use me and I pray that you're blessed by what he puts inside of my mouth and out of my belly in Jesus' name. I'm going to just keep it real with you as if we were friends on the phone because, you know, sometimes you have to be very discerning and careful when you're online. Not that you're being fake, but not everybody can digest what you're ready to put out in public. Sometimes you have to withhold and wait for an appointed time. Sometimes you have to uh, fashion your words in a certain way for those who are lacking in maturity, discernment and things of that nature. But I am going to speak as if none of that is present as if I was talking to a sister in Christ who is in the loop so those who are in the loop are in the loop those who get it get it those who don't don't um I came across this celestial individual I don't know if that's her actual name to be honest with you the name was strange but I didn't want to judge her my name is Crystal I'm sure I've seen people comment and say do you work with Crystal so I wanted to give homegirl the benefit of the doubt except I believe the name itself spiritually correlates to what she's operating in and that's a certain kind of layer that I will peel at another time or maybe within this message right now but I didn't want to judge by outward appearance just as I wouldn't want anybody to judge you nor myself by outward appearance if I got my natural hair out if I got a lace front on I don't want people to assume of me in any direction And on the flip side, I don't want to look at somebody with a head wrap on and think that they're stiff and super religious or holier than thou. But at the same time, I don't want to see your head wrap or your uh, the thing on your head, the covering. I don't want to see your head covering and assume that you are absolutely belonging to the Lord. I'm going to test everything. You feel me? So she gained lots of traction when it came to the T.D. Jakes prophecy but truth be told she had not been the first to deliver it and as I was revealing a message that the Lord gave to me to Abednego Lufile I'm not sure how to pronounce it I know it's Abednego because that's in the Bible um I was speaking to him because he God made me aware you know apart from how he made a community post that he deleted And the disclaimer that he gave at the beginning of the video, I could see in this spirit this kind of um, unsettledness, this uncertainty. I could see in the spirit what he spoke, but in greater detail when it came to Celestial. He he was like, I'm going to test the spirit. I'm not sure. And I'm happy that he said that first. Because we as a people can be so enamored by accuracy, by presentation and charisma that we fail to do the extra work to make sure that what we're eating and who we're going to, whose food we're eating, we we fail to examine that to see if it's truly of God. Right now, the discernment that we need, it it needs to be otherworldly, okay? It needs to be something next level because the great falling away as i said in a community post it is upon us now god gave me a vision about two days ago of a big bowl it reminds me of the descriptions within the book of revelation um how the angels had bowls and this bowl was like earth size and i saw it being poured upon the earth and i saw within it was delusion delusion to a higher degree I don't know when it officially was poured out, but I'm telling you right now, people are drowning in whatever was poured out. God says he will give the people over to their delusion. People want a king when he is the king of kings. So he's like, all right, you want a king? You want a prophet? You want a prophetess of the hour? Here you got it. But delusion is all up in the mix, okay? Because the people refuse to seek him. It's difficult at times to go in the secret place I asked you guys recently to pray for me so I could yield to fasting because of some other complications, ultimately spiritual resistance. Pray for me because it's not easy to reduce the flesh and cleave to him so he can increase. But we do it because we love him, right? Yes and amen. Anyways, I watched a few of her videos and um, I went to sleep. Um, I think the first night, 
I went to sleep and when I tell you a spirit of fear gripped me, it sure did. And I felt unsettled and uneasy. There is a righteous fear of God, but this fear was not of God. I I felt surrounded and I felt oppressed after listening to her. And I wanted to understand. I said, God, is it me? Is it me who is uncomfortable with such deep revelations and truths? Or is this another spirit? I won't lean in any one direction because it's not that, oh, I don't want to put my mouth on people. What even is that? Hate how that sounds. Don't put your mouth on people. I'm going to talk about whoever I need to talk about, whoever I want to talk about. But because I fear God, I'm going to put my mouth on or talk about anybody who God wills for me to. Point blank, period. I don't fear man. I fear God. Okay? Anyways, I want to be careful not to demonize a vessel of the Lord. Because when you because when you study the prophets of the Bible, you will find out that they sounded wild sometimes. They did some wild stuff. So I don't ever want to automatically write certain things off when they don't appear to be akin to what God usually does. But if it's straight up demonic, I ain't hearing you. But if it's strange, not a strange fire, but if it's seemingly peculiar, I am not going to throw that away immediately. I'm going to examine scripture. I'm going to test the spirit of that. Okay, so I went on to test the spirit because on sight, if you're open enough, you're going to hear what Celestial has to say. And it's like, oh, so profound, so deep. I can't believe this is happening. Fables and tales. The simplicity of the gospel is no longer enough. She has fables, tales, deep revelations that negate the simplicity and grace and truth of the gospel. Now we're getting consumed in information. We're increasing in knowledge, but where is the knowledge of truth, Jesus Christ? Hmm. It seems to be lacking. Still, I tested the spirit. And I did so because I actually fell asleep after giving her the time of day. I actually had a friend who would reference her to me. But you know how you see some people sometimes and you just don't watch them? Sometimes it's just because, oh, I haven't gotten around to it. But something within you just says, hmm, something is strange over there. You don't say it out of your mouth. You don't necessarily pray about it. But something within you discerning ones, you ones who have increased in maturity, right? Something says, uh, I'm going to steer clear of that. I steered clear. Not because she has a head covering, not because of any of that, but because of what my spiritual eyes saw. And I would only understand it within its full measure after yielding to the spirit of God to test the spirit. I had a friend who would reference her to me. She spoke about Beyonce and that right there. I mean, okay, we could talk about Beyonce, but because of what my spiritual eyes had seen and what I was sensing in my spirit, I was turned off and I didn't care to 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 get information about the world you feel me I didn't care to do a deep dive in such a way where we're dissecting the evil and and consuming it you know what I mean it's like what are your intentions what are your intentions because if you're trying to do this great unraveling of wickedness but like I said failing to point it to the gospel what good is the information what does it profit me if I'm not seeing Christ glorified in the ultimate end and embedded throughout the message. (sighs) Anyways, I was careful not to cleave to the um, recommendation. We're all at different levels of maturity, so I don't condemn my sister in Christ. The thing is, people in error could be a blessing to somebody at a certain time simply because of the grace of God he knows that they're seeking truth he could allow a misguided individual to be used but does he approve no just because God is using it doesn't mean he approves of you okay anyways I went to sleep and I prayed to God and I asked him I was like God please show me what it is like show me because God has a way of getting very detailed about the revelations that he gives me and I'll know to the T what it is from what it is not I went to sleep. He gave me a vision with details that I cannot recollect, but they were profound and they came with words. 
And even though I can't remember the visuals, it's engraved within my spirit. But the message was all the more profound because of the visuals that are embedded in my spirit. If that makes sense. Sometimes you hear a word, you could forget all the details, but you consumed it. It's in you. And when you get in the spirit, you start praying in the spirit of God. It's there. You know, you're you're reciting things that you heard and, and received well. Anyways, I heard God say, no matter how accurate, like in parentheses, I was thinking this and in my consciousness, I was thinking it and hearing it in my sleep. No matter how accurate, I didn't hear him say that, but I had a knowing that he said that. He said, test the spirit. And I woke up. Obviously, I was a little upset because I wanted details. Now you're telling me to go the extra mile. Now you're telling me to do more. And it's not that I'm lazy, but it's like, how do I know that I draw the right conclusions? And, you know, but I sought him in spirit and in truth. I came up, God put some videos in my pathway that if you are not biased and open to being rebuked, open to receive revelations concerning people that you felt sure of, if you're open to that and you are able to test the spirit and hear by the spirit of God, you will see the truth. You will hear the truth. And I recognize the error that she was speaking within the tone of mockery, the tone of hatred, um, the tone of pride. I, I understood. One of the, it's ironic, one of the things that was strange to me was the fact that she said angels, I mean, she said aliens, <laughs> because I don't remember verbatim, so don't quote me, but it was something along the lines of these aliens that the devil is going to present or bring or has created, and I'm telling you, they're not demons. Let me disclaim, they are not demons. And I was like, So let's see, what else this ascended master of yours has told you? There is, um, there are at least 13 messages on aliens, who I have to clarify are not demons. And aliens, who I have to clarify are not demons. Aliens are not demons. Oops, that ain't right. Cause these are spirits and high powers and principalities in high places the devil ain't got no authority to create aliens if that's what she said but it was something of the sort and these beings coming and doing these things i don't see that in scripture my love sorry to say it it sounds very what is the goosebumps it's giving that giving that all the way very entertaining but is it scriptural God spoke to me about aliens, not just me, but if you examine scripture, you're going to see what that is of. It is a delusion to distract the masses a people who look up but not at the father. And so they avail themselves to deceiving spirits who masquerade themselves. OK, who, for lack of a better word, are able to shapeshift to accommodate your delusions. But they are spiritual. They're not actual beings. She also said that demons walk amongst us in the flesh haven't seen that once in scripture they can possess a person but they cannot be incarnated they cannot be humans walking amongst us so these things are very fantasy like and can make a person feel uncomfortable because now it feels like she holds some revelation that god wasn't careful to share with us and now people who bow at her feet are listening to everything she has to say And where is it? Where is it in scripture? She has the answers, does she not? So it seems to these people. And so the people sing her praises and say, Celestial has been a blessing. You know what God said to me? He said, if children of the devil, if a father being evil could give good gifts, how much more can your father in heaven do for you? Look, your false prophets could change your life. Your false prophets, your false prophetesses could help you to be wiser, more diligent. They could teach you the principles of the kingdom, teach you how to pray, teach you how to fast. They could do all of this. But they are wicked and God has not sent them. They can do good and people hold on to the good that they have done, but that does not change the wickedness in their hearts. Consider Balaam, I think his name, Balaam. I wrote it down somewhere. I got a lot of thoughts going here and there, but all that is true. Let me end with the dream that God gave me. Okay. 
just this morning. It's crazy. Celestial walks into a post office and I don't think people see me. I'm in the spirit. But I'm seeing all of this physical stuff happen. She bursts into this post office and she got her arms out and whatnot. And it's not that she got her arms out and her and her top, but it is a form of godliness that is portrayed online. But it's like half of her was casual and like the rest of us because she presents herself as if she's above us. You know what I mean? Um, and the chosen one and the people erect her and exalt her as such but she was very normal but she didn't take off that head covering she came in with her head covering floating in the air and she's walking ferociously so i don't know if you could see the sight i don't know how tall she is but she seems a bit smaller and um yeah the rest of her clothes was normal she's irate and angry she begins to curse when i say curse i mean curse not curse out but like a curse of the old testament as if we're under an old covenant she comes in to curse the people behind the desk telling them that they shall be cursed and what they did to her grandmother they shall pay for and i come with vengeance and it, it was very ferocious i i wish i could re-emulate it if that's the word i wish i could uh recreate it and, and say verbatim all that she said if i took more time and, and asked God to bring it fully into my recollection. I'm sure I would, but just get the gist, okay? She tells them that they will be cursed for what they did and your wickedness and did it like, like straight up evil, evilness. And the people, it was like one particular white man, she's listening to him. He's listening to her, I should say, excuse me. And he's shocked. He's taken aback. He doesn't know what he has done. He doesn't know who this woman is. He doesn't know why she's as angry as she is. But he's receiving a curse on his life through her mouth for what his ancestors or people in the town did to her grandmother and to her bloodline and what she's having to deal with and how she is standing firm until she gets her vengeance. She took vengeance into her own hands and she spoke curses in this place. The people, there were two lines, one facing the glass desk that I was behind, another one on the opposite side with um, a desk opposite. So one against one wall, one against the other. The people along the other wall are looking and the people within the line that she's in are looking at her. One person was trying to proceed with the transaction that they were doing, but they were very, they were slowed down because they're listening and watching her. And there's a message in that too. Okay? People are bugged out. They're, all I could see, all of these people, their eyes are bulging out of their heads by the sight of what's going on here. And we're trying, not we, I'm, I'm there, but everyone's trying to proceed with caution because it is clear, hear me, it was clear that we were in the midst and we're dealing with, we were in the midst of and we're dealing with a mentally ill individual. She was mentally ill and had curses in her mouth and walked with authority that seemed to validate her. But she, whatever, if it was spirits of psychosis, if you will, it was welcomed in through bitterness. A desire to reclaim what was taken from her within her bloodline and it had to do with her grandmother. And everybody else had to pay. And people were slowed down. And people were stopped, shocked, in awe of what this woman is pronouncing out of her mouth. Okay? I then woke up had another dream, some details that would make this longer than I desire for it to be. But she was saying something. She was like, and I will go on my knees and I will, and, and I would cry aloud and I would repent, saying that she would do this in a certain instance if she was somebody else or saying what she has done and what, I don't know. It was as if to you know, provoke this kind of fear. Oh, it was very unsettling. But she was saying this in her video. And then in the dream, I'm running to catch up with my mother 
um, to see her out in the morning as I have done in times past and to help her out and to help her pack the last few things if she needs to whatever so I'm running out because I could hear her downstairs about to walk out the door and I fell I going down like 12 13 stairs I took like four big skips so I wouldn't miss her and because of this foolishness <laughs> and me being hasty I skid my knees and kind of burned them against the wall burned I don't know but you know and they got this shiny kind of effect that would need time to heal and would be very painful even though it's not bloody I'm on my knees and I kind of I roll down I sit down for a moment before I get up to see her and I have this it's like time slows down for a second and I'm looking down at my knees and I just I heard this girl talking about knees and all this other stuff and I'm like all this other stuff being me just contemplating everything because I feel within myself I'm already aware that the spirits she's in agreement with is questionable but at the same time she seems to have said something that i seem to immediately identify with almost as if her words had become manifest so i was like quickly questioning is this valid is this god and that right there is how people fall into the trap because of the spirits that they operate with and what seems to be some sort of manifestation and a manifestation that doesn't directly align with what they pronounced, but you could mm, blur your eyes, squint your eyes, blur it, turn your head sideways a little bit and see how it could be a manifestation of what so what this individual had spoken, what a false prophet had spoken. But it's all pollution. It's all polluted in the air. And so. Yeah. It's like it manifests when you went left things manifest when you're in the wrong direction when you're being hasty when you're in agreement with certain things not that that's what happened in the dream but when you come into agreement with a false prophet things could begin to happen in your life that seem to echo what they had spoken but it's filthy it's polluted it ain't god it's not a manifestation of glory it's a manifestation of evil and wickedness but it's spiritual so in a lack of wisdom, you assume that this these spiritual happenings is God. Look. This was a lot, but I had to get it out. I had to say it. I had to say it. I had to say it. God told me that just as quickly as this individual gained traction for her seemingly forensic accuracy concerning T.D. Jakes, it's just as quickly as she will be exposed for her false teachings and false or failed prophecies. And God is turning, he, he's playing chess, not checkers, okay? Flipping the tables on everybody. Letting everybody know, I don't care. You, you see the accuracy of this one? You see all the traction she's gaining now? All the people are like, oh, this is the one. This is the one we must listen to. And I was kind of stumped for a brief moment, except I remember the principle and the nature of God and the times in which we're living. I was kind of like, God, so why not redirect the, the attention and have the face of who seemed to pronounce this thing first in the direction of one who is holy, who isn't in agreement with foolishness, who is sound in their mind completely. But then he let me know that he's doing this to show people that still they idolize man. And he will show them that not even this one is to be idolized. I gave you a lesson about idolizing man. And you see, I allowed this individual to be used to say a thing. And still you go and idolize this one. And I will flip the table on this one too. To let you know that there is none beside me. I alone am God. And there is no other God but Jehovah. There is no other God but Yeshua, Jesus Christ. None will stand beside him. He's holding up a mirror in front of all of our faces. And now more than ever, you need your discernment. Because this discernment, the level that you need is not just some prophetic person um, using new age lingo. Okay, bet. We already see what that is. Move to the side. Skirt. Then there's a second individual who is prophesying that this is going to happen. That's going to happen. But they praise Jesus. Jesus is all up in their mouths. But you see them reiterating the same common prophetic utterances. And so, mm, red flag. That's the second bunch. But how about the third that is eloquent? 
that that is well versed, that is knowledgeable in the words of God, that has the presentation and the years to be a vet in this thing, who seems blameless, who has many people singing their praises. How about that one? This spirit is a next level delusion that even the elect right now are seduced and enticed by. Even the elect right now. Okay? This is not just some deception. This is a spirit of delusion. Hear me clear. This is a spirit of delusion. These are demonic entities. It's not just somebody who just deceived and said some things out of pocket, who was influenced by a spirit, but these ones are possessed. The, the, you see this one here today. The spirit operating through this individual is the spirit that will present itself through the Antichrist, through the false prophet next to the Antichrist. We are seeing precursors to what is coming to overtake the whole entire world. Stay close and stay in your word. The last part of the dream. Um, how far am I into this? 26 minutes, Lord. Here, we'll be done. Who will have listen? We'll listen. Um, I saw it was like a coven. That's what it looked like. She had people, 10, 10 women, about 10 women surrounded her, right? Not in the physical, but I could see that they were in connection with each other. And it was not spoken, but it was understood. This this phrase was very prominent. It was spoke. It was not spoken, but it was understood. It was understood that they were to go out in her defense, and when a video would get big concerning her and raising speculation concerning her, there were people who idolized her so much that without it being spoken, there was a mutual understanding that we will back her up. We will sing her praises and validate that she is of God. They were bewitched. This was an, assi an assignment of the enemy to seduce and entice the people. When the people see a thing and, and people are praising and agreeing with a thing, there is a bewitchment that happens to the masses who come and watch it, to the masses who come and hear it. This is a lying prophet under an unclean spirit that needs to be cast out. God really highlighted the story of the girl who was saying, "Isn't these are the men of God, blase, blase. It's the same kind of spirit that she needs to be delivered from, okay? We will pray for her. I pray for her in the name of Jesus. I pray she humbles herself. I pray that she's healed from the traumas from her bloodline in the name of Jesus. I pray her eyes open and I pray she really begins to grasp the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that she recognizes her God-given beauty and that the traction that she's gaining right now, that it doesn't consume her and, and whiff her away, but that the measure of it would cause her to redirect her focus on the God who is God alone. And I pray she would begin to speak utterances that are not filled with deception, not filled with distraction and perversion, but instead is speaking to glorify the one and holy true Jesus Christ. I pray you bring her to the simplicity of the gospel and let the people feel love rather than hatred. Let them hear the knowledge and wisdom of Christ Jesus rather than the knowledge and wisdom of this fallen world and the ways of human understanding, vain wisdom. Let it not be what overtakes her, but let the love and light of Jesus Christ radiate. I rebuke a false light. I rebuke the deception upon your life today, those of you who are listening. And I pray if your heart is hard, that God softens it right now in the name of Jesus so you can be receptive to these deeper revelations. Let us not be filled with anything unholy. Create in all of us, Father God, in your remnant, a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. Give us the boldness to echo these truths into the airwaves according to your will and help us to stand firm when resistance comes. Help us to be strengthened, confident, embraced by your love in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Father. We love you. Thank you for a new year. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for teaching us. And I decree and I declare that those of you 
who have an ear to hear, who do receive and listen to these truths, I prophesy over you today in the name of Jesus. The year discernment this year, <laughs> it will be astronomical, piercing, dividing soul and spirit and joint and marrow. It will be profound. It will confound even the wise because it is of the spirit of God. This is a conditional word. What is required of you is to seek Christ in his scriptures, to yield to the call to fast and pray when you need to. Because when you do so, he can reveal the depths of mysteries to you and develop your character that you may not stumble. Develop your character so you can handle the revelations and pray for me as I reveal these things. Because indeed, there is backlash and a righteous burden that comes with these depths of truths and a people who don't want to hear it. But I pray and ask that you pray for me to stand firm in the midst of it all and to not be overtaken by emotions. Because... If and when you should see me be ferocious, a lot of times, most times, it's because God put a word in my mouth. But I'm human, and sometimes I hurt. And sometimes I'm only standing in the way that I, standing and fighting in the way that life has trained me to and forced me to. So pray for me to handle and steward all things well and to not think of myself more highly than I ought to. I'm human, but I love Jesus and I thank him for the shedding of his blood and who he is in our lives. There's nobody comparable to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you on the other side of this phone. May God heal you, deliver you from meditations unholy, a spirit of fear. And may he strengthen you to endure and grant you your heart's desires at a time that is suitable and aligned with the timeline of God's heaven in Jesus' name. You're doing amazing, sweetie. <laughs> Those of you who need to hear that and those of you who have been off course, get back on. It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Do not think of yourself any less than. Do not think that God is a respecter of persons. When there is this praise and seeming a thing that that baffles you like, whoa, it seems too good to be true. And what? Oh, my gosh. What is this person doing? They have a secret sauce. When it seems too good to be true, a lot of times, not all times, because God is miraculous, a God of the impossible, but a lot of times in these times, especially online, when it seems too good to be true, most times, that's because it is. There's been a demonic entity at work, but when it's holy, you will know. If you're close to him, you will hear. God bless you. My name is Cristo Nicolai. And that'll be changing soon. Boom, boom, boom. And I will see you in the next one. Or hear you in the next one when God sends me. Okay, I love you all. Bye.